Okay guys, so in this video we're going to talk about arrays, objects and maps in JavaScript. So let's get into it. So basically I had a question where someone asked, okay, can you elaborate a little bit on what is an array, how do they work in JavaScript, what is a two-dimensional array and what is an associative array? So I figured, yeah, let's just walk through that. So an array is just another word that we use for list. It's just a list of something. It's something that just represents a sequence of elements of some type in, and that's this. It's array is just the name we gave list in JavaScript. Go figure, right? And a 2D or a two-dimensional array is just a way that we usually express that. All right, so we have an array of arrays, if that makes sense. So you will put arrays inside of another array. You could make a three-dimensional one as well. Like there's, It's just that it's very common to have the concept of a two-dimensional array because it's very helpful to have a two-dimensional array at certain points, which we will look at in just a moment. Now an associated, uh, an associate array is Another way for in JavaScript, we don't really have a specific type for that exact thing, but rather what we call them are objects. And it's just a way for you to store a key value pair. You have a key of some sort that maps to some type of value. And in JavaScript, as I said, that's we don't really make a difference between that and an object. Now, in recent time, though, we have gotten something that we call a map, which is pretty much the thing that is most commonly, like, uh, I would say that in most other languages it's the thing that you think about when you talk about an associated array and they will we'll just walk through the examples and hopefully the differences will make sense to you in just a moment. So let's just have a look here. I've created these test files here and if I run mpx suggest we should see that my tests all pass, hopefully, and there they are. Yes, I have all my little just files here. So we'll just look at these examples and hopefully these will make it very clear to you what all of this means. So first and foremost, let's talk about arrays. So as we said, an array is just a list of elements and you can, most commonly, you will see two ways of creating them. Like you can create an array with just using the new keyword and the type array and just or the method the constructor array. And then you can also just do a literal array like this. And these are equal. Like this is the same thing from the perspective of JavaScript. And an array has a type, which this is the thing that might be a little to me at least. I thought this was very confusing when I started out. So an array is an object because everything in JavaScript is an object, pretty much. Everything is has a property or something. That it's kind of funny. You can actually try that out in your browser. Most things like everything has some type of dot annotation that allows you to do something with it because it is an object. And that is sometimes a good thing but it's also a bad thing because basically what this means is that it's tricky for you to figure out if something is an array or if it's an object because there's considered to be the same thing but then we have this handy little method here called array.isArray and this will actually return true or false if the thing that you're passing in is an array or if it's just another object right so an array as we were saying, it's just a list of elements and it can hold, in JavaScript it doesn't matter what you put in it, since JavaScript isn't a type language, you can basically put whatever you want inside of an array. So here we have a number, a string of a number, a regex, an, an object, a boolean, and another number where we just do, like we basically add two numbers together. And then we have this dot length property, which is one of the most common properties we have on an array where you just get the length of how many elements are inside of this little array here. And of course you can extract these values as well. This is the way you add them in here. But you can do it this way. You can extract them this way as well. And I mean you could do things like this as well. You could say expected 0 equals 1. And that's how you would insert something at a very specific index into an array in JavaScript. And then JavaScript doesn't have the concept of a, like a, a set length, so you can pretty much insert something at any point at any index, and it's going to take care of it. And then finally, if we ask for something that is undefined, like let's say we go to index minus one, because as we probably know already, everything in JavaScript starts at, in, a, in an array, starts at zero. In other words, the first element is going to be position zero. 
So this is going to be 0, 1, and 2. And minus 1 doesn't exist. So this is going to return undefined, or it's going to actually just, yeah, it's going to return undefined. And the same thing goes here, like we have, we're grabbing something that is out of bounds. Notice that we only have three elements, but we can still ask for the element at 999, and that's also, also going to be undefined, because there's no element there, right? So this is the basics about arrays in JavaScript. Now let's have a look at a two-dimensional array, because that's what the specific question was about. So as we were saying, you can actually put whatever value you want inside of an array, anything. So this is an example of a two-dimensional array, where I have an array of arrays, where inside of those arrays I actually have a number. And there's nothing more crazy to it. So you can see here that I expect that the element at the zeroth index is going to be an array with the element with the number one inside, and then two, and then three. And as you can see, the enumeration here is, as I said, zero, one, and two. And you can get like like fancy like this, and you can create a, an array with an array that has a one element of, in this case, null, and then inside of that you can put another array. I mean. There's no limit to this, pretty much. And here you can get really crazy and you can just put a bunch of arrays inside of each other and then you can go into, you know, the zero index of the zero because you can still index into things. Remember, if you know that the element that is at the zero index is an array, then you can just do this. You can basically index into that and then you can index into that and into that. And then finally you're left with the array with the number one inside. But you can index into that and just extract that out and make that a one as well. So that this is just a short hand notation for you to basically just be able to say that, all right, grab me the array at C, uh, index zero and then grab me the array of that array, uh, the, the zero index of that array and so on and so on and so on. Now you don't really do this all that much, but this thing here is probably the example that my little question here was about, which hopefully will make sense to you. So one example of where two-dimensional arrays are really, really useful is when you want to create a matrix or a grid of some sort. Now when you do this, either if you're doing mathematics or if you are making, say, a game is also something you could do with this. Maybe you have a tic-tac-toe type of thing here where you want to be able to put things in different positions on this grid here. Then this is a very good way of doing it. So this is the mental picture I want you to make for yourself. So when we're looking at this here, I mean, I could do this to make it even clearer to see if I can see if we can see a pattern here. So this is our grid right here the same thing as we can see here. So you can think of it as each of, this is just a row, and this is another row, and this is another row, and then we have all the elements, right? So with that, uh, with this is you've kind of hopefully grasped the essence of the, like the two-dimensional array. And as you can see here, it becomes a very simple x and y system where, all right, so 0, 0 is going to be the first element, which is going to be 1, and then 0, 1 is going to be 2, and 0, 2 is going to be 3, because we're moving along the x-axis on the first row. And then we go down to the next row, and then we can do the same thing, and so forth, and so forth. Great. And now let's have a look at an object, or the closest thing to an associate array we actually have here. Or rather, I'm not going to say the closest thing, because maps are more in line with what the definition of that is. But this is the thing that most people are using. Objects are still pretty much the go-to for everybody. Even though maps are, you know, they're, they're in the standard today. So, we can create it in multiple ways. We can do this, like new object, or we can do this, but the literal way is, as with the array, this is the most common way you see people declaring an object. And it, of course it has a type, which is going to be object, and it can hold some values. And here we can see that I've created an object, and I have set foo to foo, and bar to one, and bass to a regex of um, bass. And then I use this little method here, object.keys, which is basically just a way for me to extract the keys into an array. So the string keys here, foo, bar, or ba and bass. And then I'm grabbing the length of that, and just asserting that I actually have three keys. Nothing super fancy, but this is just a convenience method for, a method for us to actually extract the keys from an, an object. We can also do value, which is going to extract the values. Or let's, was it value? Yes, it's values. Like this. And it should run. 
and there it is. So you can do the same thing here, but in this case, when you do values, it's going to not, it's not going to grab the keys, these keys, but it's going to actually grab the values of uh, those keys. So foo, one, and bass. Cool. And we can provide values, of course. So the way you index into an associated array or an object is that you say, all right, this is my object, and then you do dot key, dot key, dot key. And then you can actually see here that we can expect that the key is going to be equal to that value. Now, there is a rule regarding this, and that is that in order for you to be able to do this dot notation on, a, on an object, you need to have a like a single world or a camel case type of thing going, or a snake, or something of this nature, in order for the key to just be, to be a valid, uh, a valid JavaScript key or JS uh, JavaScript object key. But you can also use something like this. You can even put spaces in here if you want. But the rule then is that you need to make this a string. So you need to do this, where you basically wrap the thing that you're like the key in double quotes or single quotes or something like that. And then when you want to index into the object in order to grab that key, you actually have to use braces notations. As you can see, this is very similar to how an array works, where an array you would index into by using the, the, uh, the an this annotation and like just the number of that index of so 0, 1, 2, 3, etc, etc, right? But here you're actually using the string key. So they're very similar in that fashion. But if you're just using the regular old syntax, you can just do a dot instead. And then finally we can see here that it's going to return undefined if nothing's there, right? Cool. And then let's finally look at maps. So let's get that out of the way. So maps is a fairly recent addition to JavaScript and it's basically just a, another way to do a very, it's, it's, a, it's a more specific, you can think of it as a more specific way of using an object because an object has other properties that you may not want on a map and maps have certain other a few other functions that are not inside of an object so making the difference there sometimes it matters sometimes it doesn't it's up to you to kind of decide when you need one or the other but here we can see that a object is not the same thing as a map they are different things we saw here earlier that an object here, like a, if you create an object through a constructor and for a lit, from, from a literal object, you're not actually going to, you're going to get the same thing, right? But here you're not going to get the same thing. These are different things. And confusingly enough, they are still the same type. And the way that you use a map is you just create it like this and then you can set keys. And in, it's pretty much, as you see, it's very similar to the way an object works. And then you can get the size, which is different from length, but that's the way you get it in an object. And then we can provide some values here, we can set some values, and then we can get some values. And then finally, we have the same behavior on a map as with an object. If you try to get something that isn't there, it's gonna return undefined. So a good rule of thumb here is that if you're unsure what you're going to use, most people use an object, but if you have a specific use case and you feel like, yeah, I don't want the same, I, I, I want to make a difference here, then using a map is, is, a, is it's another alternative to creating this associated array behavior that we've been talking about. So yeah, these are the bare bone basics about arrays, two-dimensional arrays, maps, and objects, and hopefully you found this information useful. Have a great day.